Have you ever wondered how one can design an electronic circuit that can perform uh, a conversion between an analog signal into a digital signal and from a digital signal uh, into an analog signal? Yeah, if you are uh, curious on this, then I'm planning to give you some kind of insight into this topic today. We will start with a small kind of motivation why uh, we need both digital and analog signals in a system. And we will continue with the, the principles of digital to analog uh, conversion using two different methods. And then continue with uh, the analog to digital conversion, uh, starting with a simple converter and then for the successive approximation, flash converter, we will discuss uh, the properties of conversion error, uh, the use of a sample and hold circuit and also the use of an, a multiplexer in combination with the, the A to D converter. This picture here is showing a, a data flow graph uh, starting with an analog to digital converter and on the output there is digital to analog converter and in between we have a digital signal processing and this digital signal processing is typically done in some kind of embedded uh, electronics platform um, could be a microcontroller, uh, digital signal processor, or in combination with uh, a programmable logic. Uh, the analog signal on the input are most likely stemming from a sensor, and the analog signal on the output is most likely going to some kind of display unit or maybe an actuator. And uh, it is a quite a lot of benefit on um, implementing the signal processing uh, in a digital uh, computing platform compared to analog signal processing since uh, for digital signal processing uh, the way we process the signal is actually defined in mathematical formulas and it is implemented as programs in uh, a microcontroller or digital signal processing or, or as uh, well in logic programmable logic and this will also allow us to to update easily the signal processing uh, if there is any need while the, the unit is already delivered and out on the field by just simply sending out a new software or firmware and also the the uh, uh, if you think about uh, producing a number of uh, embedded systems for digital signal processing uh, the processing will be uh, much more accurate per unit and there will not be much of a, a variance and difference between the different produced units as since the fact that the signal processing is defined in, in logic or in program, firmware, software. If you compare with analog signal processing you are dependent on the tolerances of passive components. I would say that the tolerance for uh, uh, an capacitor or an inductor is in the range of maybe like 5 to 15 20 percent so i think this is a very good motivation why we need the a to d converter and the d to a converter we start with the digital to analog conversion and a very simple principle using these weighted resistors and the whole circuit is based on a summing amplifier. This is a feedback resistor and this is an, an operational amplifier. And we are summing the current into this branch on the input on the operational amplifier. And the values of the resistors on the inputs are increasing with the power of two. These switches are either connected to the ground potential, zero potential or to the branch that is uh, giving the summing current on the input of the operational amplifier. And then depending on how you are switching these three uh, switches uh, corresponding to three input bits, then you will have different uh, levels on the output <coughs> that follows uh, uh, the, the uh, discrete levels from binary coding. 
if no one of these uh, switches are connected to this input summing branch then you will have a zero uh, voltage on the output and the idea is that when you connect this resistor the 8R uh, to the summing branch and only this one then the current on the input will be the voltage reference divided by 8R if only this 4R then the current will be uh, two voltage references divided by 8R and if only uh, th this was for 4R and if only 2R uh, then we will have this four times the voltage references divided by 8R and then uh, if you you add this combination then you will sum up the current on the input on the operational amplifier to give the corresponding uh, level on the outputs uh, this converter will then require the second logarithm of the number of discrete levels so it means that if you need 16 uh, levels on the output in total uh, then you need 4 bits and if you need 256 levels on the the output then you will need uh, um, you will need uh, uh, 8 bits and 8 resistors and of course it can be difficult to produce uh, resistors of such large variance in, in uh, uh, re resistance and integrate everything on one single chip so this is a, a drawback with this kind of design what is uh, usually referred to as the R2R network is the solution to this problem with a large variety of different resistor values and now it really boils down to only using two resistor values you can see here in this circuit diagram the converter uh, that is the same uh, summing amplifier but the resistance network is now somewhat changed and we can instantaneously conclude that we have only two resistor values R and 2R in this circuit diagram and then again the, the main benefit is that we only need to have two resistor values which is much more uh, simpler to integrate on a single chip without having this large variations of different resistor values we are now going to continue to analyze the circuit uh, from this node and on the input and independently if the resist if the switch is connected to the summing current or if it is connected directly down to the ground then we have the same current that is flowing through this resistance uh, so we can draw the corresponding equivalent network we have 2R and we have 2R uh, that is connected down to the ground uh, and we can assume now for uh, beginning at that we have the current of I reference divided by 8 at this resistor and if we have the I reference divided by 8 and we have the same voltage over uh, these two resistors this we know for sure then of course it must be the same current also fl flowing through uh, this resistor since they have the same value and this uh, current must be the sum of these two uh, currents uh, meaning that you it must be I reference divided by 4 and the resistance uh, in total, the equivalent resistance of these two resistors must be, must be equal to R since we have uh, 2R uh, and 2R in parallel. We continue now uh, to analyze the next node and we know that we have the I reference uh, by uh, 4 flowing in this uh, resistor. And we know that these two resistors can be replaced with the value of R. So this is what we have drawn here in the, the equivalent circuit diagram. And we have R plus R, which is then 2R, the same value as for this resistor. Meaning that the reference, I mean the current flowing through this resistor must, must also be the same as uh, on this branch. And the sum of the currents must be the I reference divided by 2. And the equivalent resistance for this uh, network must be equal to R. So uh, now we know that uh, there is uh, a current of I reference divided by 
uh, 2 that flows into this uh, node. We continue with the next node uh, and we know that now there is I reference divided by 2 that is flowing through this resistor and through this network that we have concluded that we can we can replace it with the equivalent resistance of R. And we have R plus R, meaning uh, 2R, uh, and the current of I reference divided by 2, and again the same current must flow through this resistor, and the equivalent resistance of this network must be equal to R. And that's why the, the input current into the, uh, the whole network must be the voltage reference divided by R because the equivalent resistance that can be seen from this point in a network is equal to R. Mm. And now uh, we have already concluded in our previous development that through this branch and this resistor we have I reference divided by 8 and then I reference divided by 4 and I reference divided by 2. So we can set up the corresponding table for the different binary values uh, We have eight different binary values and we can see that if we only activate the lowest, least significant bit, then we have the current of I reference divided by eight. If we only activate the second uh, significant bit, uh, then we have the current of two I reference divided by eight. And if we activate the most significant bit, then we have uh, four I references divided by eight. So the summing of the currents all together uh, gives the possibilities to uh, configure for an output voltage uh, corresponding to eight different output levels according to the input binary code. We will now turn our interest to the digital to analog converter instead and in fact i can tell you that the first couple of examples uh, will show you that the the digital to analog converter actually contains and is built up from an, an analog to digital converter have a look at this uh, small principle sketch uh, uh, this is a, a binary counter that is connected uh, via its uh, digital counter outputs to a digital to analog converter and the analog signal from this converter output is connected co to a comparator circuit which means that uh, um, as long as the analog input signal is higher than the voltage that is given from the D to A converter then you will have a high value to the enable that will enable the binary counter to, uh, to count uh, in accordance with the, the number of clock cycles. But as long as, uh, or I would say that when the voltage uh, on the output of the D to A converter will increase and will be higher than the analog uh, input, then the, the value of this enable will be low and the binary counter will stop to count. And this means that uh, it will ramp up uh, the output voltage and when and after, after the time when, when the output has reached the level and just above the value of the analog input, then the counter will stop and you can use this end value as the, the digital output uh, signal corresponding to the equivalent uh, digital code for the analog signal input. Uh, in worst case, uh, it means that you will need uh, the nth uh, power of two number of clock cycles for an n-bit converter to complete I I its conversion. Um, and this is of course a, a, a disadvantage because uh, the time for the uh, converter to complete will not be deterministic, it will be dependent on the, the level of the analog input. And also one can conclude that uh, the binary counter, that is a, a, a special case of a general digital sequential network. So uh, we now seek for another faster and time deterministic sequence. So it, it should be 
able to conclude in, in much less number of clock cycles and it should consume exactly the same number of clock cycles for every time you perform this conversion. This is what we actually want. And I would say that this uh, successive approximation method is the answer to our desires. And if you look at this uh, principal sketch, it is more or less the same, except that the binary counter is now replaced with a more general, what we call a digital sequential network. Uh, yeah, there are this done signal and we have the digital output that is uh, latched from the sequential network as well. Mm. And the idea here is that we should uh, program this sequential network to test each one of the data bits starting from the, the most significant bit uh, to see if it, it fits the, the, the analog corresponding analog value, if it fits within the range of the analog input. And if so, then it will be included into the output code. And I will now show you, uh, um, using a very simple example, how this sequential testing of, uh, of the bits are being done by the sequential network. The input voltage is here a constant uh, green uh, line and it corresponds to the, to the level of 3.5 volts. And the blue line here and the blue, blue line curve uh, will uh, develop how the, the uh, corresponding analog output from the D to A converter uh, will look like. And we are now just waiting for this start of the conversion as soon as this one be activated to 1, then the conversion will start. Um, so we uh, output the first code uh, to the uh, D to A converter from the sequential network. And we said before that we will start to test the most significant bit first, meaning the D4 in this case, and we assign it to 1. And then the corresponding output from the digital to analog converter will be 2.5 volt, approximately half of the uh, input window to the A to D converter, which is 5 volt. And since it is lower uh, the voltage than the analog input, then this bit should be included into the output code, and we can continue to the next step, keeping this uh, most significant bit assigned to 1. And then we continue to test the, uh, the, the, the next significant bit, which will be D3. And then uh, with D4 and D3 uh, equal to 1, then the corresponding output voltage from the D to A converter will be 3.75 volt which is higher than the analog input so then the the converter will uh, know and uh, that that the uh, the bit number d3 should not be included to the output code we can continue keeping only uh, d4 to 1 but not d3 to 1 since this one must not fit into the uh, to the to the output code and we continue to test bit number uh, D3, no, sorry, D2, yeah. And with D4 and D2 assigned to 1, then the output analog uh, level would be 3.125 volts, which is lower than the analog input. So uh, D2 uh, is then included into the output code. And we can continue, and now we'll test uh, bit number D1. and now the output analog value will be 3.437 and it is still below the value of the input analog uh, signal so even D1 will be included with the one in the output code and we, now we have only one bit left to test and that is D0, the last one. We assign that one to one also but now the corresponding output analog uh, level from the D to a converter will be 3.594 uh, volt, which is higher than the, the analog input. And thus the last uh, and the, the, the least significant bit will not be included to the output code. And this will be then the corresponding output code. And you can have an indication that the conversion is done. And now it is possible to read uh, the output code after the conversion. 
and we can con conclude that uh, the conversion was consuming n number of clock cycles for an n-bit converter and the time is also deterministic it will consume the same number of clock cycles independently of the the level of the analog input signal which was one of the, the ideas here let us now assume that the input analog signal uh, has a very high bandwidth lots of high frequencies and we need to have a quick sampling of this signal with high uh, uh, clock speed and thus the converter needs to be very fast and I would say in that in that case maybe the class of converter that could meet our requirements is the flash converter have a look at the principal sketch here in my slide what we see here is a chain of resistors and uh, <coughs> the uh, resistors all have the same value the resistance value and the uh, nodes here in within this chain is giving the discrete values uh, for conversion uh, the discrete levels uh, the nodes are defined in discrete levels that are sensed by all these uh, comparators and if the input uh, analog signal is larger than the uh, the uh, 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 corresponding uh, reference level from this chain of networks then the output signal will be zero if it is lower then the output signal will be equal to one uh, and for this n-bit converter then it requires the nth power of 2 minus 1 number of these comparators that give uh, each one of them uh, a single bit line output so all these bits they need to be converted by a binary encoder into the binary code on the output and this binary encoder then is uh, typically, typically a combinatorial network mm. And we can also conclude that an n-bit converter will require the nth power of two number of, of equally uh, resistors the, with equal resistance. The benefit with this converter is that it is fast, but on the other hand it is expensive and also power hungry. Analog to digital converters they are not perfect, they are associated with different kinds of errors linearity error for instance, uh, offset errors uh, but maybe most of all the uh, quantization error and uh, I would like to give you a short presentation of the quantization error in this case uh, we see here on this diagram on the horizontal axis we have the analog input to the converter and we have the digital output uh, from the converter and this is the conversion uh, function and we can clearly see the discrete levels for this conversion and now we can define one LSB one least significant bit as the voltage reference uh, to the uh, converter divided by the nth power of 2 and then one can say that one LSB is the difference between each one of the uh, discrete quantization levels of the converter. If we then assume a known digital output code for that digital output code we can say that the, the uh, analog input is somewhere uh, somewhere uh, larger than uh, the digital output code uh, times one LSB and it is less than the digital output code times one LSB plus one LSB so the error is somewhere between 0 and 1 LSB the quantization error on the other hand we can make a little bit trick on the rounding function and say that we can try to add the number 1 to the converted output code and then if the new output results in a lower conversion error then we can select a new digital value otherwise we still uh, keep on with the old one so this will then generate a converter that has the following behavior that the for the assumed output digital code then we know that the analog input is equal to the digital output 
code uh, times one LSB plus minus a half LSB, which means that the rounding error is uh, is less than a half LSB. And this is the benefit, the reduced uh, um, conversion error uh, from this rounding to the closest integer value. Yeah, of course, there is a lot more to say about uh, conversion error for the, uh, the A to D converter. But on the other hand, I have been trying to keep this presentation as an introduction to the area. So if you are interested, then you, you can search for other presentations or try to find it in, in other courses. Uh, independently of how quick uh, and fast an, an, an A to D converter ever can be, still it takes a certain amount of time to finalize the conversion. So we need a circuit that can sample the input signal and freeze the signal to a constant level during the time that we perform the, the conversion. And this is called a sample and hold amplifier that I will now show you on this slide. This is a principal sketch of the, the analog input um, fed to a trans impedance amplifier from a, an operational amplifier. And then we have a sampling transistor with a, a MOS gate. And whenever this MOS gate is activated and the, the current is flowing through the transistor, then the voltage level on this capacitor will be charged to the level of the input analog signal. And when we are releasing the uh, gate on this sample transistor, then this um, uh, capacitor is supposed to keep uh, the charges long enough uh, during the sampling period to keep the voltage to this second trans impedance amplifier that will give the output uh, uh, analog signal that we use for the conversion to the A to D converter. And the, uh, uh, the uh, connection and disconnection of this sampling transistor to this capacitor that happens uh, synchronously uh, together with the, the uh, A to D converter and the conversion. We can have a look at the um, this uh, sequence diagram where we see the, the uh, clock pulse to the sample and, and hold uh, uh, circuit and we see the analog input and we see the, the uh, input signal that is fed to the A to D converter. And you can see here that this is the time when the sample and hold signal is low and then we have a freezing function of the output so the uh, output signal is kept to the same uh, constant value but then we open open the and connect the transistor during the sample period and the uh, capacitor is charged to the level of the input analog signal and then we are releasing the transistor again and we have uh, we keep the level you know at the constant level during the time that we are doing the conversion so during this period then we are allowed to do the actual conversion analog to digital but since we have a, a large variation of the, the analog input then we need to take a sample and, and freeze the level that is the whole point with the sample and hold circuits and this functionality can be uh, extended even more this is a kind of a, a sampling unit that often is uh, uh, integrated together with small microcontrollers that have analog inputs. Uh, we have the A to D converter and then we have a number of sample and hold uh, amplifiers on each one of these analog inputs and then there is an analog multiplexer so this analog signal depending on the address that we feed on the input to the analog multiplexer we are sampling uh, any one of these channels. So. The one single uh, A to D converter uh, can be used uh, in combination with addressing uh, one out of four input analog channels. If we are talking about one simple example from a um, uh, simple integrated A to D converter, there is this from uh, th this one from uh, natural semiconductor ADC zero eight four four. Yeah, today. We have been discussing about different circuit solutions and methods for conversion from digital to analog signals and analog to digital signals. And this kind of conversion we 
we really do need in a, a measurement system in order to be able to to process and analyze the sensor signal in a microcontroller or or digital signal processor you know i i really hope that you also think that this is as interesting as i think it is so keep on studying